There are so many blockchains today that it's easy to lose track of what is what in the crypto jungle. So in this series, we'll take a look at them individually and in comparison with their competitors. Let's make things easier for everyone. And to start, here's a pop quiz. Could you name any important crypto event or scandal that happened before the merge? In the crypto sphere, everything happens all at once and some important events get overshadowed by others. But do these headlines seem familiar? Here's a recap for those who feel lost. On August 29th, Crypto Leaks, a blog where crypto whistleblowers reveal inconvenient truths about the industry, posted that a secret pact was made within the industry. Do you remember that? Well, according to it, Ava Labs, the creator of Avalanche, conspired with Roche Friedman, a law firm. Hmm, why should it matter? Well, to make things harder for their competitors, such as Solana, Binance, or ICP, the Internet Computer Protocol. Allegations state that Roche Friedman have been working together since 2019, but not for free, of course. The law firm was, allegedly, again, given solid amounts of AVAX, the Avalanche's native crypto and Ava Labs stocks. For what? Well, Roche Friedman would use litigation to hurt competitors and through discovery gain access to the competitor's confidential information. The allegations were fortified with videos like this. So you, you really a problem solver also? Yes. I deal with making sure that the SEC and the CFTC have other magnets to go after. People, like litigation can be a tool to competition. <laughs> Fantastic tool. It's a fantastic tool. What you saw here is Kylie Roche, the founder of Roche Friedman, detailing his ties to Ava Labs. Ava Labs CEO, and forgive me for my pronunciation, Amir Gunn Cider? commented on the whole situation that the whole thing is nothing but a conspiracy theory. Kyle Roche later stated that the videos were recorded without his consent during private meetings with Kristen Ager Hansen, whom uh, I know now works for Dominic Williams, the creator of ICP token. According to Forbes, Kristen Ager Hansen confirmed that he was the unseen second party speaking in the videos and he insisted he had never met Williams. Nevertheless, the whole thing caused a vortex of scandal within the industry. Okay, that's the tea. But if you take a closer look, you may ask what exactly causes the competition? Okay, Avalanche is a prominent blockchain network. And among competitors that were supposedly targeted, we saw Definity's internet computer protocol. Now, how do you compete against your adversaries? Obviously by offering better services. So let's see what are the key differences between Avalanche and ICP. By getting under the hood of both blockchains, we could learn a lot about these two prominent names of the industry. Hey, keep in mind, diving deeper into blockchains might seem scary at times, but don't worry. We will break down all the complex stuff so it would be easy to understand. And even if something is still hard to grasp, that's why we have a comment section, right? We're in this together. So go ahead and share your comments with your questions. Okay, so let's do this. First of all, what are both Avalanche and ICP? In its very essence, they are both blockchain networks. Easy, but they differ in their visions. Avalanche is a smart contract blockchain and it can host other smart contract blockchains that it calls subnets. They are working on dethroning Ethereum and becoming the king of smart contracts. Well, good for them. Their tactic is to become one interoperable, highly scalable ecosystem much more efficient than Ethereum. And by doing so, to attract dApp developers and clients to it. ICP, on the other hand, has a broader mission. Dominic Williams, the founder of Definity, the foundation behind ICP, fell in love with the vision of developing the internet computer, which according to Definity means this. The first truly unbounded and decentralized computer to run at web speed, allowing everyone to use it to securely run business logic, store data, and create apps. To turn this vision into reality, the Definity Foundation hired some of the best cryptographers in the world to develop completely new forms of cryptography that would enable creating a blockchain that would be fast enough, efficient enough, and infinitely scalable to allow smart contracts to serve web and thus play the role of a world computer. But missions are abstract. Let's see some facts. Both Avalanche and ICP can act as layer 1 and layer 0 blockchains. Meaning, they provide ground level of the entire ecosystem that's later built upon them. A layer 1 network can be understood as a base blockchain that validates and executes transactions on its own and often serves as the infrastructure for developers to launch smart contracts. One popular example of layer 1 is the one we all know, Ethereum. Meanwhile, a layer 0 is a type of protocol that enables developers to launch multiple layer 1 blockchains, just like Polkadot is one of the examples of layer 0. And layer 0 supports the development of many layer 1 blockchains. 
Now that we have established that, now let's see how these blockchains look from a close-up. Avalanche actually consists of three built-in blockchains the exchange chain for creating and exchanging tokens, the platform chain that coordinates the validators and allows the creation of subnets, a sovereign network composed of dynamic subset of avalanche validators, and finally, the contract chain that runs smart contracts. All three blockchains are validated and secured by all avalanche validators. At the heart of this innovative design, subnets would be the key feature allowing for creation of this decentralized, interoperable, highly scalable ecosystem. The subnet vision implies that independent networks could specify their own execution logic, determine their own fee regime, maintain their own state, facilitate their own networking, and provide their own security. To give one example, the GameFi project DeFi Kingdoms created its own subnet on Avalanche and started using their own token Jewel to be used for gas payments. Now, let's talk about the Internet Computer Protocol design. Rather than a traditional blockchain, the Internet Computer is more like a distributed computation and storage network. What does that mean? Well, this design allows for applications to be built entirely on chain, from backend smart contracts to the front-end interface used by end users, to data stored on chain and even software dependencies. Some of the examples of these are the on-chain decentralized social media called District and Discover. You can understand them as decentralized versions of Twitter and Reddit respectively. ICP uses novel cryptography called Chain Key Cryptography. Chain Key allows the internet computer to have a single public key that can be used to validate computational results. Meanwhile, the private key behind this public key is split and distributed across nodes in the network, and it is never stored anywhere for security reasons. And this works in star contracts to traditional smart contract blockchains, which need to store and compute the entire chain since the genesis block to deem a transaction valid. The internet computer smart contracts are also different. Referred to as canisters, they can store code, data, and software dependencies. Each canister can hold up to 4 gigabytes of memory, and that is why it is possible to store data on-chain cheaply. It costs approximately 46 cents per month to store 1 gigabyte of data on-chain. And for the internet computer to scale, not all nodes run all canisters. The nodes are partitioned into so-called subnets, and different canisters are distributed over these subnets. Subnets can be created or split to balance the load of the network and add additional capacity for computation and storage as the network grows. The first thing that can catch your attention is that both Avalanche and Internet Computer use subnets, but they're not similar. ICP subnets are combined through chain key cryptography to form just one infinitely scalable shared blockchain. Meanwhile, the Avalanche subnets currently act more like standalone customizable blockchains. They offer the ability to create independent tokenomics and execution logic. However, currently they lack interoperability and their consensus mechanism copies the one from the other Avalanche in build chains. Talking about consensus, the Avalanche blockchain runs on proof of stake consensus mechanism, with some key innovations such as sub-sample voting. ICP, meanwhile, runs on something called Threshold Relay. It is a modification of proof of stake system that it was developed just for this blockchain. And now we can check how these networks work in practice by looking at some indicators. The first one is speed. The speed is measured by finality, which is the time it takes for the end-user transaction to be considered final, and TPS, transaction per second. Avalanche claims we have near-instant transaction finality, but in reality it is up to one second. ICPs, on the other hand, through chain key technology, update smart contract states in one to two seconds per subnet used in a given application. So, in this regard, it looks like Avalanche takes the lead, but there's more to speed. You could process transactions in no time, but what if the network has a limit of transactions per second? A delay appears if there are more transactions taking place simultaneously than the network is capable of handling. So, TPS, transactions per second, comes to play. When it comes to measuring Avalanche's TPS, things get misleading. Why? Well, as mentioned previously, Avalanche is composed of three different blockchains, and each of them has a different throughput. So, for example, Avalanche's exchange chain supports over 4,500 TPS. But if you take into account their contract chain, the numbers would differ greatly. 
So the truth is hidden behind the layers of complexity and in reality it's not the nice sounding 4500. But let's look at it in action. If we head over to the real-time dashboard of the network, we can see that uh, last week's max DPS observed was 256. But then again, it doesn't mention on which chain this DPS is achieved. Therefore, if you go deeper and check the data on realtps.net, you can see that their C chain's DPS over the last week was only 1.62. Well, that's not a lot. With ICP, things get interesting. Recent official test numbers are 11,000 500 TPS. But there's a catch. Going over the real-time dashboards showcasing the current state of the network, you can see that their transaction throughput is closer to 2500 at this very time. So even with numbers not being the same as the official test version, you can see that ICP has higher TPS than Avalanche. Much higher. And that's not all. There's no limit to the number of transactions per second on ICP. How? Well, the current limit is determined by the number of nodes that constitute the network. And this number will increase. This in turn will increase the network's TPS. Scalability, the ability to adapt and support increased transaction throughput and potential future growth. The Avalanche network can scale with subnets. However, there is a limit to how many subnets a validator may operate and every new subnet requires more AVAX to be staked by the validators. This limits the pace that the ecosystem can scale. On top of that, there is limited interoperability between subnets. However, Avalanche also plans to use layer 2 to scale further. ICP, on the other hand, uses the so-called chain key technology. It combines all the subnets into one holistic blockchain, and the number of these subnets has no limit. Therefore, ICP scalability directly corresponds with the demand and the number of nodes. Transaction fees. Well, this one is easy. It pretty much is the extra you pay when you send crypto. With Avalanche, it depends. It can range from 75 to 225 quay. It is a fixed yet dynamic price. The higher the demand, the higher the AVAX value, and the higher the fee. Simple. When it comes to ICP, it is free for end users interacting with dApps like social media apps. Under the so-called reverse gas model, developers prepay costs by loading canisters with tokens used to pay for computations. So users can interact with a dApp without having to pay any tokens. But even for the developers, the cost is extremely low. For example, the maximum cost for a transaction is 1 cent and the cost of transferring tokens is fixed fee of 0.0001 ICP per transaction. This means there will be fewer surprises than finalizing transactions when the fee is easier to calculate. Now let's take a look at data storage costs. This is actually a trick question because blockchains like Avalanche were not built to provide data storage. Meanwhile, ICP's innovative design allows for data to be stored on chain, with one gigabyte costing as cheap as $5 per year. So as you can see, the two blockchains are different, not only in their vision, their values, the size of their tokenomics, but as well as in their services they provide and their future potential. It's sure that both blockchains will continue improving and maxing out their stats, and the current comparison will eventually become obsolete. But as for today, it's enough for people to decide in which they see more potential. So which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comment section below and if you reach this part of the video I honestly thank you for your time and I really hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe and like our videos too for us to create more content like this. Thank you and see you in the next one.